I've never really thought much about my feet until recently, because besides being the appendages to collect wayward pens, I don't really interact with them. And I don't think I give them enough credit, because they literally have carried me along every single step in my life so far. So that got me thinking, how exactly did they come about and why do they look this way? So, I went to one of the world's experts on human evolution to find out the answer to this question. This is Dr. Bernard Zipfel from the University of the Witwatersrand, and he's agreed to meet me at his top secret vault, number one Jans Matev in Uradov Empire Road next to Block C. And in this vault are some of the most priceless fossils in the world. So when, when we talk of, of complete uh, um, early hominin skeletons, um, we're not all that ambitious in, in that if we have something like this, we would consider that to be a complete skeleton. Of these, there's only about 10 in the world. Six of them are in South Africa, and five of them are right in this room. These skeletons of our long distant ancestors make up some of the most important pieces of evidence into our understanding of what makes us human. There's the three million year old Littlefoot, the two million year old Australopithecus sediba, one of our more recent cousins, the 300,000 year old Homo naledi, and the one that started it all, the Taung child. There was the very famous um, Taung skull, which was found in 1924, and published in 1925 by Professor Raymond Dart. And this would arguably be the world's most valuable and profound hominin fossil in that this was the first early hominin ever found. It's over two million years old. It's a new genus and species, Australopithecus africanus. And uh, importantly, it drew the world's attention to Africa, saying that we are of African origin. And as Professor Philip Tobias said, that is no small thing. And uh, it is quite a profound message that there's a common origin of humans in Africa. So um, that was the beginning of our understanding and discovery of these uh, very early hominins that um, uh, give us important information on our evolution. I did my PhD here at Ritz University on foot evolution. So I started out as a podiatrist in pediatric medicine. Oh. And I did that for, for several years. All in all, I was in that field for 17 years. But for a large portion of that, I've always had an interest in, in physical anthropology. And then in a sort of a roundabout way, um, taking an interest in in coming from a podiatric medical background, taking an interest in the, the historical and, and, and anthropological side of uh, why we have uh, foot disease and why we function the way we do. And realizing that bipedalism, walking upright, is a unique thing among primates. We are the only primates that habitually walk upright. And within the mammal uh, world, we are also quite unique in that we have this way of walking upright. Bipedal locomotion or walking on two legs comes naturally for most of us. You put one foot in front of the other and, well, repeat. But it's not quite so simple. You see, there are actually surprisingly few species on this planet that can do this. We evolved from a species that was largely tree climbing and then became tree climbing and moving on the ground, then tree climbing and moving on the ground using only our legs and depending less on our upper limbs for locomotion. And then ultimately we've become a species that moves exclusively on its hind legs and we've freed our hands up to do other things. Hence our ability to develop the technologies we have to become the dominant species on the planet. And through that, we also developed larger brains. So we became a large, or let's call it advanced brain species, where we use our upper limbs to do all sorts of things, and least of all, move around, and depending on our lower limbs to carry us upright. 
and this all started in my neighborhood, where I love to run, in what is known as the cradle of humankind, the birthplace of our species. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, our ancestors would have been running, like I am, in this exact spot. Well, not on this very spot, because there's a road you now. And perhaps because we learned to run is the reason that we became such a dominant species. Certainly, we evolved as a species that endurance runs. In the contemporary world, there's really only three animals that can do that. You've got some dogs can endurance run, horses endurance run, and humans endurance run. And um, being able to endurance run put us at a hunting advantage. We can hunt animals to exhaustion. Animals that are faster than us but aren't able to sustain running as long as we do. Um, so there is the hypothesis that um, uh, it, it's our running capability that enabled us to evolve completely the way we have and to to have the upper hand as it were but endurance running seems to be quite a recent evolutionary development and um, very much a homo sapiens thing um, at a push we had our immediate uh, hominin uh, ancestors who um, may also have endurance run but looking at our older hominin species uh, that we're familiar with we don't have evidence that they could actually endurance run. They could probably run, they could run short distances, but then also keeping in mind that most of these early uh, species, early human relatives, they weren't the hunters, they were the hunted. They were the ones on the menu. So yeah, in the cradle is a spot where our distant ancestors decided to stop monkeying about and start walking and running on our two feet. And this was long before the days of Adidas and Nike. Since then, our feet have undergone many upgrades. If you take um, the species found in 2008 by, by Lee Berger, who was his son who picked up the first, first specimen, um, and it was named uh, Australopithecus sediba, you have a, um, for the first time, we had a, a, a complete complex of a rear foot, a heel bone, calcaneus, an ankle bone, the talus, and then you had a, a tibia, which which comes on top like a distal leg bone. That's quite an important part of the foot. We weren't ever sure when we see all three together. If we found that separately in one location, I would have said this was some sort of primitive Miocene ape heel bone. If I found that on its own, I would have said that some form of human, very close to a modern human. And if we found this, we would say, oh, that's a perfect combination of very ape-like features, very human-like features, and some features that are unique even among hominins. But they come from the same individual because it was found like that. This is a cast of the original specimen. It doesn't look like much, but there's the heel, there's the ankle bone, there's the leg bone. So we know it all belongs to the same individual. If I had the bones separately, I would have said they're different species. Because it's a snapshot in time, where evolution doesn't all move in a smooth line perfectly all the way. Somewhere along the line, you're going to get various features that have been adapted to do various things, and we're going to see these very odd combinations, like they shouldn't belong together, but they do. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you find another hominin who lived at the same time who had a much more primitive foot or much more modern foot. We don't know what the forefoot of this particular creature looks like. We're making some guesses, but we're hoping to find some of them at some stage. We don't know. You, you'll get um, a species such as Homo naledi that would have a perfectly modern looking human foot with slightly more curvy toes. And I would imagine it functioned very much the way a modern uh, human foot did. But as you go up the skeleton, you start seeing some primitive features in the hips. You have a cranium with a brain one third the size of a modern human. So that hints towards the hypothesis that perhaps the foot was the first part of our anatomy that became human. And um, personally, I, I think that is the case. The shocking news is that of all of these hominins we have here, 
it's possible that not one of them is a direct ancestor of ours. But without looking at the genome of these creatures, we will never really know. The reason why we say that is previously, when you only found one species in each time period, you make a presumption that the one evolved into the other. But we have multiple hominins living at exactly the same time on the same horizon. They can't all be ancestral to us. And they have a lot in common with each other in terms of their anatomy. Uh, we, we have today not come across modern crania with modern brains and primitive tree climbing feet. <laughs> the opposite is true. We're having feet that are very modern, capable of doing what modern humans can do, but we've got a small brain creature and still using the upper limbs to some extent to move in trees and do things other than develop technology. So um, there's a strong possibility that in fact, the, the human foot was the very part, first part of us to become human. So although our feet may be ugly and smelly, it's probably thanks to them that we've become the remarkable species we are today. <laughs>